Um, in the public sector, how will your party ensure that the non-wages entitlements for nurses and midwives are delivered? For example, full funding, implement, uh, full funding uh, implementation of the business planning framework, the tool for workload management. Also, given the attacks on nursing workload management tools such as staffing ratios into state, will your party provide a commitment to preserve the ability to include workload management mechanisms in all awards and, and entitlements? Animal. I just missed the first part. Oh, of the absolutely, question. Simon. Yeah. Would you mind repeating the question again? Because there was a lot of detail yeah. in there. Thank you. In the in the public sector, how will your party ensure that the non-wages entitlements for nurses and midwives no, are delivered? Non-wages. Non-wages. Yeah. Okay. No. Uh, for for example, funding full implementation of the business planning framework, yeah, yeah, yeah. the tool for workload management. Yeah. Also, given the attacks on nursing workload management tools such as staffing ratios interstate. Will your party provide a commitment to preserve the ability to include workload management mechanisms in awards and agreements? Adam, would you like to take the floor for pl first, please? Sure. Uh, to, to the second part of the question, uh, yes. Um, to the first part, uh, how would we... You're going to have to run it by me again. I'm it's a, a bit fuzzy about it's what a the bit question of complicated is. question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Could you explain the question, please? Yes, yes. Yeah. So, um, for public sector agreements, I, this is what I think. Shout out if I get it wrong, team. Um, the non wages entitlements for nurses and midwives, so leave wages aside. Um, the thing that's most important is the implementation of the business planning framework. That's yeah. about staffing levels, yeah. things like that. I think the question is asking about that. So how, given the attacks on nursing workload management tools, such as nurse patient ratios interstate, and that's been all the stuff that's been in Victoria, mm. um, how will your party provide a commitment to us to preserve the ability to use our business planning framework as it is? Okay. Yep. The pure new framework. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's a joint Queensland oh, health. Yeah, my point yeah. is, yeah. Back and it's a complicated tool, Adam, but it's very, very responsive to nursing workloads. Okay, sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not familiar with, with the tool and, and I'm sort of not across the detail, but in, to, in sort of broad principle terms, uh, I think it's, it's essential. I guess this sort of comes back a bit to a response I gave earlier this evening that I think um, issues of, of workload management and the proper functioning of, of any workplace are legitimate concerns for the workforce and for them to be involved in and to have a voice in. Uh, so. Uh, I guess the commitment I can give is is by saying that I'm aware of and committed to those principles uh, and receptive to uh, hearing from the workforce and especially through its legitimate union representation uh, on on you know what's needed in the workplace to help uh, manage the workload and ensure that it's sustainable and, and that we get good service delivery outcomes for the community. Thank you. There's a really good course that the Q and U run on business planning framework. Probably worthwhile coming. Hello. You're very welcome. Is that no. an invite or a rule? Well, it's probably an right. instruction, really. I think you should know about it. <laughs> Simon, I want to ask you a question. Um, can you explain the tool to me? Please? I want to be clear, clear in my mind what I'm dealing with. Can I, can, say, worms. Well, can I indicate to you you've got half an hour? Yeah, right. No, he's got two minutes. Right. I've got the bell. Two, two minutes. Uh, the, the business planning framework is a prescribed methodology for uh, the planning, the management, and the surveillance of the business of nursing and midwifery. It's based on a balanced scorecard, meaning that the services that nurses and midwives provide must meet the criteria of effectiveness. They must be able to do what they're designed to do. They must be efficient. Uh, they must be safe, safe for patients, as well as safe for staff. Um, they must be appropriate. Uh, they must be uh, responsive, and they must be uh, accessible. So you're talking about clinical outcomes as well as... Yes. Okay. So, okay, fine. Okay, so fine. and the reason it's a big issue for nursing and midwives as a workload tool is that in order for us to be able to provide that service and ensure the quality of service for patient outcomes and for women, um, we need to be able to manage our workloads. Okay. And it was determined by the Q&U &E in conjunction with Queensland Health? Okay. That's correct, okay. jointly. And what it is... I apologise for asking these questions, but I want to make certain I understand the question before I make a commitment. What you're saying is this delivers better clinical outcomes for patients and also better outcomes for nurses and midwives as well, correct? Okay. Um, the LMP, uh, sorry, I have always said 
always said that listening to doctors and nurses and understanding their issues, their concerns and their answers is the way forward to better clinical outcomes and better outcomes for all clinicians across all, all sectors. If a tool exists that has been developed by a body that delivers outcomes and also protects the individuals who give the outcomes, the LMP would support that because at the end of the day, medicine, whether public, private, primary, acute, whatever you want to call it, is about outcomes for the patient and also protecting the rights of workers and also the entitlements of workers. So I have no qualms in endorsing a principle that does all that. Um, there's been comment tonight made in relation to uh, what happened in Victoria and New South Wales. Let me make this very clear. What happened down there is not the LNP. We're going to work for Queenslanders right across the board. Clinical outcomes will be the mantra that we will have in relation to delivering health services across the state. If I'm the minister, I can't do that without nurses, doctors, paramedics, and health professionals on board. They are pivotal, human beings are pivotal to clinical outcomes. And we will work with them on a day-by-day -day basis in networks, Medicare locals, GPs, and across the sectors to make certain we get the outcomes. And if that tool de um, delivers outcomes, it will be endorsed. Thank you. Minister. Uh, well, I can state uh, categorically that we are committed to uh, not just the principle of the business planning, planning framework, but the more effective delivery of it in the workplace, which I think is really where the challenge is. Uh, yes, it's a prescribed framework uh, and it's an appropriate framework. In any workforce, in any industry, you must have a, a workload management tool or device of some sort. Um, uh, otherwise, uh, you'll get poor outcomes, and uh, both for uh, the business as well as for staff. So, uh, the BFP, uh, I think the real challenge is about how you deliver its effective implementation in the workplace. I've talked to nurses at many, many uh, hospitals. I've talked to the um, I talked to the delegates at most of the hospitals when I can uh, when I get there. Um, and um, aside from management, so you get to tell me what you want to tell me. Uh, without red lighting yourself. Um, and I think that's uh, the real challenge is actually implementing. Um, so we are committed to implementing fully the BFP, not just the principle of the BFP. Um, and uh, I, I think uh, when we're talking about non-wage uh, entitlements, you've got to also remember uh, what we have committed to as a government. Uh, and I haven't mentioned it previously, so I'll take this opportunity because I think it's uh, irrelevant. And that is the common award uh, that we have agreed to across 10 major uh, uh, working conditions and entitlements that are found uh, in not just the nursing and midwifery award, uh, but in uh, many other awards, uh, so that we've got a common award that we've created for the health industry uh, of awards, industrial agreements, uh, and policies and directions uh, around those around those ten key things that have been captured and put into a common award that's before the Industrial Commission of Queensland as we speak, uh, and that also gives you uh, confidence about security of employment, uh, which is so important uh, for your advocating in the workplace through a more decentralised decision making process that the BFP be implemented in practice in each hospital, not just embraced as a principle across the system. Thank you. Aidan. Yeah, thanks uh, Simon for the question, um, obviously very intrinsic and detailed and no doubt we'll be picking your brains in the future in terms of any legislative reform that's required. I think as I alluded to, my first five minute opening was the, uh, when you're talking about your workplace uh, management uh, mechanisms, it goes back to what we're talking about, the prevention, prevention and cure. I think what we're seeing, as I said, uh, we're looking at a ratio some will say five to one, I'd say four to one in terms of four bureaucrats to one nurse or doctor by the bed. Uh, clearly that ratio is, is where you have the disconnect. And until you change that, uh, you're going to continue to get what you've always got. I mean, the further you go to Brisbane, you'll, you'll, see, you'll hear nurses say the ratio. You go to Toowoomba, they'll say it's 10 to one. You go to Men Island, they'll probably tell you it's 100 to one. <laughs> but what, what we need to find there is obviously the disparity between 
and I, I could use the analogy of a pit stop. You know, if, if a racing car pulled into the track and you had you know, four people holding the petrol bars and one left was, you know, one was left to change the tyres, you know, you'd think that something was wrong. You know, this effectively is what's happening in the nursing sector. And, uh, and what we've got to do is obviously make sure that they take that pressure uh, off the tyre changer, nurse, and make sure that the bureaucrats are empowered to do you know, the jobs that they're required to do without any extra, um, any of those uh, positions, of course, being a heavy burden. Because as I said, a lot of these departments are a reflection of how government has been operating for far too long in the state, uh, where government has become uh, its own worst enemy. You know, they've tried to control everything, and as a result, everything spiralled spiraled out. And of course, you have a public uh, service that gets bigger and bigger and bigger, but gets more and more stifled as well. Uh, so I think what we need to do is see a realignment uh, to balance the ledger in terms of uh, what the duties are required in terms of the bureaucrats and the nurses, and you get far better outcomes in the long run.